In step four of how to become a DJ, we're going to talk about the basic technical skills that DJs use in a live mix. There are four of them which we'll talk about today. There's beat matching, or aligning the timing of two songs so that they're in sync with each other. There's phrasing, or aligning the measures of two songs in an appropriate way. Gain control, or keeping track of the various levels of volume. And EQing, or reshaping the audio frequencies. So let's talk about beat matching first. The purpose of beat matching is to get multiple tracks playing at the same tempo and correct phase. Tempo is the speed at which the songs are playing, and phase talks about how the beats of two songs align with each other. Okay, think about it like two cars driving next to each other on the highway. Tempo would be your speed, let's say 60 miles per hour. And phase describes if the two cars are directly next to each other, or just a little bit out of alignment. And if one of the cars is behind, but starts going 65 miles per hour, the cars will eventually line up, and they'll even seem to be in sync for a moment. But eventually, the faster car will pass up the one going 60, so it's going to need to slow down to line back up in phase with the other car. And that's basically how beat matching works. You use your player's pitch fader to adjust the tempo of a song, then to dial in the phase you can use either your player's jog wheel or pitch bend button. Or with records, you just touch one of them a little bit. But you might say, David, is it really even necessary to learn how to beat match today when there's such a thing as the sync button? Well, maybe not. But I mean, I truly think it's a great idea anyway. First, it gives you the ability to beat mix on anything. Turntables, for example. But more importantly, it helps to develop and tune your ears so that you know what to listen for. Manual beat matching helps to train your ear and makes you a more confident DJ. Now you can always come back to this later, but I happen to think that learning to beat match early is a great idea. Now if you're still not convinced, check out my article, 10 Reasons You Should Still Know How to Beat Match by Ear, by visiting passionatedj.com slash beatmatch. Alright, next up is phrasing. That's phrasing with an R. Now this one will make sense to anybody who's ever played a musical instrument. It just means to mix your tracks together at points in the songs which make sense. Now almost all music that you're going to be DJing is in what's called 4-4 time. Whether you play EDM, hip hop, funk, top 40, and technically this means that there are four beats in a measure, or a bar, and that the quarter note gets one beat. Now the takeaway here is that you need to learn how to count to four. You count the beat like you're a human metronome. Maybe tap your foot if it helps. Count like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now each four count makes up one measure, or what we like to call a bar. So let's count some bars and measures at the same time. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, and so on. And basically the tricky part is trying to keep track of that in two tracks at the same time so that you can kind of align your tracks and start them in a place where they make sense and they will overlay appropriately. Now all this is why most DJs will use multiples of four when bringing in a new track. Now, usually you'll hear something happen at the end of 16 or 32 bars. Maybe a cymbal crash or a drum fill, for example. And lining up the incoming track in a similar way helps all these elements work together instead of against each other when you're transitioning between these two songs. All right, let's listen to a techno example. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A little faster tempo this time. Now start listening for clues to kind of tell where the phrasing is. You can hear a buildup starting, and we're going to come to a breakdown here, and then a new beat is going to start.
Okay, this time we're going to rewind it a little bit. And we're going to start a new track at the end of that little breakdown when it goes All right. Okay, so now we have two tracks playing at the same time. This track and this track. Once again, that's this track and this track, which together make this. So these two tracks happen to work pretty well together, and you can tell they're phrased properly because you can count them together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, moving on to gain control. Any DJ rig contains a few different levels of volume adjustment. Now firstly, each mixer channel has its own gain knob. Now this lets you adjust the level of a track by watching your meters. Then each channel has a line fader. When you move a line fader up, you're sending that audio to the main output. And your main output has a volume control too. Then, of course, there's the crossfader which lets you fade between channels in a left and right motion. Oh yeah, let's not forget that DJ software has its own game structure too. Yeah, I know, all these layers can start to make things confusing, so when in doubt, just read the manual. Now by the way, most DJ software features some sort of auto gain functionality which can help you minimize the amount of manual adjustment between tracks, but if there is one general rule, it's stay out of the red. Now, different manufacturers meter things in different ways, but red is generally meant as a warning sign. So if you avoid it, you should stay in the clear. If you need more volume, boost it on the amp or speaker side. And then finally, there's EQing or equalizing. Now, EQing is the act of boosting or cutting frequencies so that multiple audio tracks blend together nicely. You know, the majority of your audio space gets eaten up by bass frequencies, especially in dance music. You may not wish to mix two powerful kick drums over one another, since they're too loud to combine. So a typical DJ mixer includes a three-band EQ, low, mid, and high, which allows you to carve out the audio space for a buttery bl Now when used properly, the EQ is both a useful tool and a means of creative expression. Equalization will not fix a bad mix, nor will it work miracles, but we can use it to smooth together multiple audio signals and make our mixes come out with just a little bit more polish. Now, if you'd like to learn more about EQ specifically, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to episode 94. In that episode, Tony, Tripp, Mo, and I talk about the audio spectrum, avoiding clashes, phase cancellation, the difference between EQ and filters, and much more nerdy stuff. That show was audio only back then, so it's a good one to save for a long walk or car ride. So let's recap step four, learning basic DJ skills. There's beat matching, where we adjust the tempo and phase of tracks to align them for proper mixing. There's phrasing, which is knowing how to count your songs so that you can align them and mix them in a way that makes sense. There's gain control, or just keeping track of all your levels with the general rule to be stay out of the red. And then there's equalization, which is carving out or boosting frequencies to help audio tracks blend together. Now I know that's a lot to take in, but I hope that I was able to repackage and explain this in a simple way. We're covering a lot of ground and it's easy to have information overload. So if this guide is being helpful for you at all so far, please do me a favor and just leave a like or a comment wherever you're hearing it. Or if there's something I'm not being clear about, feel free to comment about that too. I'll do my best to address common questions and concerns. And fear not, because in the next section, we're getting into the fun stuff. Step five is all about DJ gear, so stay tuned. <laughs>